Lab. All right, so um, I just wanted to first thank everyone for um, coming in and joining us tonight uh, for our alumni panel. Um, the purpose of this panel is to kind of ask the real questions about how uh, you, our panelists use psychology to get into the position that they're in now as a major, um, and also to kind of answer some questions about how they could leverage their skills that they learned through psychology into having a successful career, because they're from varied career paths. Um, my name is Rob Ewing. I'm uh, the marketing communications manager within the ASU Department of Psychology, and we have a few other uh, members of our team here. But I was also a psychology major back about a decade ago, um, and I used that to go into communication. So I, this is, I, I think, a really uh, great talk for all of you guys to join us at. Um, and with that said, um, I think we're getting some people jump in on right now, but I'm going to start off with um, just having our panelists introduce themselves. Um, and if you can, uh, do your name, uh, the title of your current job, uh, when you graduated, if you feel comfortable sharing that. Um, and maybe let's start with Ray. Do you want to start? Yeah. Hey, everyone. Um, my name is uh, Ray Swice. I'm right now, currently, I'm an account executive uh, at, General, uh, at General Mills. Um, I graduated in 2012 and uh, my degrees were um, business and psychology. Great, and uh, next up, let's go Christina. Hi, I'm Christina Matthews. I am an attorney. I own um, Matthews Law Firm. I graduated in 2001 with um, a psychology degree and also a political science degree. All right, and then uh, you also have a JD, is that correct? That's correct. I actually have my law degree is also from um, the Sandra Day O'Connor uh, School of Law. Great. And then... Uh, and Carolyn's geez. my favorite teacher. <laughs> <laughs> and I think she's no. on the call. Uh, all right. And then uh, Stephanie... I'm Christina. Oh, sorry. Oh, no, you're good. Hi, my name is Stephanie Scheibe. I am the current program director and associate clinical faculty at Northern Arizona uh, University in their physical therapy department. I graduated in 2000 from ASU with a degree in psychology and exercise science. And last semester, I just joined ASU's EDD program through the Mary Lou uh, Fulton Teachers College. Great. And then uh, Cassie, are you Bill still or are you Cassie? Uh, Cassie now. <laughs> we'll see you when we're at the end. So. <laughs> Hi, I'm Cassie. I graduated from ASU in 2014 with a degree in psychology. Um, I'm actually in human resources now at an agency called Impact Suicide Prevention Center. Great. So, um, Beyond just the, the title of your job, what, what does that um, position entail? And Cass, if you want to start, then everyone can kind of uh, follow through. Yeah, so I'm relatively new to this position. I was working, you know, direct client facing in the clinical world since I graduated. And after some internal struggles, realized that maybe that um, long term that wasn't that wasn't going to fit me. So I recently moved to human resources and I more so work um, with our new hires. So I work with the new hire orientation and I do a lot of the back end stuff. Um, the goal is to hopefully move into more of a career with this field. Right. And uh, let's go to Stephanie. So I'm um, after my bachelor's degree at ASU, I went to physical therapy school, um, graduate school. And so I was a physical therapist for almost 20 years now. Um, and about eight years ago, I made the jump into full-time academia to teach others how to be um, physical therapists. And I've slowly moved up and now I'm the program director. So I'm really responsible for the day-to-day -day activities of the program, as well as dealing with uh, lots of conflict management with students, with faculty, um, and other stuff like that. 
And so Ray, as a category manager, what do you do? Yeah, uh, it's a, it's account uh, account management or account executive. I think uh, my title has changed since the last time we connected, Robert. Um, but to a varying degree, somewhat similar uh, as well. I mean, at the end of the day, I manage um, like several different um, like business accounts. You think of General Mills and all the products that we that we have, um, like making sure everything is like running smoothly, selling in like new items when we have any uh, new innovation, new exciting innovation. Um, and it's not just like sales. Uh, I think a lot of people have like this negative connotation, like a used car salesman. Um, but the reality is there's a lot more to it. It's more professional, like meetings are set up. Um, uh, and uh, there's a lot of like data analytics too, which, which is something that I get really excited about. Awesome. And uh, Christina, so within law, what do you do? Um, so I started off as a public defender when I was a baby attorney, and then I moved to um, the federal, um, federal law, criminal law, and now I'm in private practice, and I handle everything from um, criminal trespass, um, uh, driving on a suspended, to uh, first degree murder cases in terms of criminal, and then everything in terms of family law. So everywhere from divorce, child support, custody, things like that. So as everyone can kind of see, every single one of these panelists are all graduates with a degree in psychology, but you can tell that it's a very wide range of careers that are available within um, that, that major or, or the major that you guys all currently have. Um, so on that sort of thought process, how did you use psychology to get to where you're at currently or how do you use psychology in your current job? Um, so whoever would like to start first, I don't want to put you guys on the spot. I will. I talk a lot. So <laughs> um, I will tell you that. So I do two areas of law. So um, criminal law, um, there's a lots of there's different standards in terms of uh, psychiatry and or psychology. Um, there's, you know, guilty acceptance saying and there's the, you know, standard of whether or not you're, a, you know, competent to assist in your own defense. Um, in family law, your um, any sort of diagnosis can be used in terms of child custody um, and you know your ability to parent and the best interest of the children. And I don't think I even realized um, until I started redoing my website over the past year or so, um, but people just having a bachelor's degree in psychology, which, you know, it definitely means something, but I'm definitely not as um, uh, revered as, you know, Dr. Kavanaugh Toft, um, but they actually call and say, I have a very simple website, but people call and say, oh, I see you have a de degree in psychology, so you must understand this and I'm like yeah sure yeah I do <laughs> but, but I mean it just it, it it's actually amazing how many people really look at that when hiring a lawyer and I never I didn't realize it until I put it on my website that people mention it uh, daily all right so uh Stephanie how about you yeah, so I ended up in psychology mostly as a way to get the prerequisites for, for graduate school. Um, and I have to say my stats class in, in ASU psych department was, I, I still remember, remember it. So uh, it was very helpful. In terms of how I've used it in my job, so as a physical therapist, I think sometimes I use my psychology degree way more than my PT degree. Um, you know, we, we deal with a lot of patients who have psychosocial issues and, you know, I think having that understanding, um, it, 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 it makes a world of difference. So, um, obviously with patients, um, there's that side of things. And now in my current role, you know, I have to, you know, work, like I mentioned with conflict, a lot of conflict management, um, you know, students who are struggling either professionally or academically, they get to come see me, um, even, you know, trying to determine if somebody needs a referral to, you know, a different provider for mental health 
counseling, um, you know, crisis assessment, that sort of thing. So I would say that um, I've gotten a lot of use out of my psychology degree. And Ray, I think if I can recall correctly, you went to uh, an internship fair, is that correct? So how did, how did psychology position you well for your role? Yeah, I think I kind of have a similar story to, to Stephanie, actually. Like I took a, a, like a social psychology class, like an upper division business elective, and uh, enjoyed it uh, so much that I actually ended up uh, getting a dual major in, uh, in psychology as well. Um, but the interesting thing is that I feel like I use my psych like kind of degree in psych background uh, more so in my day to day job than I do in uh, my business uh, degree in uh, business acumen. Um, uh, I mean, there's a lot of like talking uh, involved. And so uh, sometimes it's like wording something a specific way. Right. Um, I know one of the the, the uh, Dr. Cialdini, I think, is like one of the most uh, um, kind of like renowned in this like field and we studied him quite a bit and in, um, in some of those like social psychology classes but I think that's what it comes down to is just like having like a conversation and engaging with people and how do you do that right and uh, that's kind of what it uh, what it kind of comes down to ultimately. Dr. Cialdini's course was one of my favorites. Yeah it's it's so fascinating. And for anyone who wants to read more Cialdini, there's there's a he's an emeritus faculty now, but he has a whole bunch of world renowned books on persuasion. Um, and uh, Cassie, how about yourself? Because you have a, a slightly different path that's more um, psychology uh, specific, but uh, I think everyone would like to hear. Yeah, I mean, certainly when I was working in more of the clinical practice, I used it every single day and working in that field your knowledge grows immensely just by working around other people and in those experiences. But now currently in human resources, I would say more so the ability to empathize with people and understand that our behaviors come from experiences. And so to be able to have that patience and be able to work with individuals without having judgment can be really helpful in the human resources field. Um, it's also helped me <laughs> personally, right, be able to communicate uh, what I need, be able to kind of stop and, and take a take a break and recognize, you know, where my faults are at in situations. Um, but honestly, it's helpful throughout my entire life. <laughs> All right, so now our next question is, uh, knowing what you know today, if you could go back to when you were an undergraduate, um, what do you wish you would have done that would have supported your pathway to your first job um, and, or ultimately your career? So how would you have done uh, your planning differently or would you have done it differently? Um, and whoever would like to start. I can start this, uh, this go around. Um, I mean, knowing what I know now, uh, there's probably a lot of things I would do uh, do differently or uh, have done, uh, right? But I think some of those things are more specific to like me or my personal like goals or, or career. And so uh, I won't share too much about that. But I think the one thing that I feel like is sort of universal, regardless of your career path, um, and just as important to me now as it was when I was graduating was, uh, was networking. Um, I think and one, I would say I don't love the word networking. It sounds very impersonal and, and kind of transactional, if you will, like relationship building is, is what I prefer. And too often we look at these like relationships as like a means to an, uh, a means to an end. And that's, I think that's fine uh, a lot of times, right? Um, but you never, you also never want to burn a bridge because you never know when it's going to come full circle or when your paths are going to cross. Um, again, I think for, for my specific, like, kind of like area or, or like company, if you will, there's a lot of people that started at uh, General Mills as interns that are now managing people um, uh, that they, uh, that were essentially managing them at some point, right? And so I think that's like one, like one of those like examples that like, okay, I don't want to burn any bridges or don't want to ruffle any feathers like too much, right? Um, uh, but also like the fact that I'm here with you guys today is because I ran into Dr. Newberg at, um, on a flight uh, on, one of, on one of my business trips. And he was saying, hey, like we're working on this like Psych for Life uh, program and uh, would love for you to be a part of it. And so 
it's just it's there's so many different real world examples um, of how kind of like that networking and relationship uh, building can I mean, not necessarily change your life right but um, uh, it does have an impact um, uh, a pretty significant impact in my opinion definitely and we we've just launched a mentorship network so if anyone's interested in joining we'll send out links um, later to join that where you can kind of continue the conversation with mentors. Um, so Cassie, I was, I was kind of curious for you because you have done a career transition, how, how your experience would be on um, planning your pathway now. Yeah. Uh, I mean, ultimately, I think I made the decision that becoming a therapist wasn't for me probably in the last couple of years. So for a while there, I was, you know, that, that was 100% the goal. But um, I think if I had to go back kind of along the lines of what Ray was saying was doing an internship. Um, I did a research lab, which was great. You know, it was a great experience. I learned a lot, but I didn't want to go into research. So um, it was cool, but it didn't really help me kind of progress. Um, when I graduated, I think the number one thing I struggled with was understanding what kind of jobs I even qualified for as a bachelor's level in the field of mental or behavioral health. Um, and having an internship would have really, really helped me kind of open those doors, um, but also just kind of learn more about it. Maybe I would have figured out sooner that <laughs> maybe that wasn't the right fit for me. Um, so wanting to help people, but maybe in a different capacity. Um, so definitely doing an internship and continuing that networking. I've been a part of the Psych for Life for a little bit now, and I just really wish that was something available back then. It's great that this is, this is here. Thanks, Cassie. And uh, Christina, I was going to ask you as well. Um, I actually want to build on what Ray said in terms of networking. Um, and I think that what I didn't understand until probably just recently was not only how important networking is, but how important it is to realize you are always networking. And so to always present yourself, you know, on the understanding that you you might be meeting, you know, uh, I I met a client that was a millionaire that ended up kind of funding my entire practice for an entire year and didn't know it because she, you know, it just met her at a, some other event that. Um, a lot of other people didn't, you know, look nice for or um, weren't prepared for. And all of a sudden you meet, you know, a multimillionaire who wants to basically say, if I can be your only client for the next year, I'll pay you, you know, $200,000, $300,000. Um, and if you're not ready and dressed for success, then it never would have happened. So, um, that was one of the, that was a thing that my mom taught me. And my mom was a lawyer as well. Uh, kind of always be ready for, uh, always assume that you're networking no matter what, no matter where you are. And um, that has served me very well in terms of advice. So I'm passing that on from my mother. <laughs> that's that's a great piece of advice. The, there's a phrase I've heard. I don't know if people say this consistently, but your, your network is your net worth is something I've heard. Um, and I, I think it's a great piece of advice. Um, and Stephanie, uh, how about yourself for the pathway? Yeah, I, I think obviously I even wrote down networking in preparation for this. So I think we're all on the same page. Um, and then I think looking back, I wish I would have opened kind of myself up to different experiences. You know, I, I kind of had my path set one direction. Um, but I wish I, you know, I think, I think we, we think we know what our, our end goal is, but if I, I think looking back, it would have been good to just have a variety of experiences. And, you know, especially as an undergrad, I think that that can really help um, solidify that this truly is the direction that I should go with this. All right, so I'm gonna skip ahead to a question that's a little further down here. Um, that it asks, as an undergraduate, 
did you think you'd be in the position or job that you're in today? And if not, uh, why not? Um, so uh, let's start with Ray. Yeah, I think uh, you alluded to this uh, earlier, Robert. Uh, no, this is not the, the career path I imagined for myself. Uh, I think kind of out of like during college, I was really set on working for like one of the big four accounting uh, accounting firms. Um, uh, and I mean, like, I think like some people had already mentioned it, uh, like I did an internship um, at McCormick um, that really kind of opened my eye. Like, it was actually interesting because I had a couple different internships like uh, to choose from, and I really wanted to do something differentiated. Um, and this one was kind of it, it was out of the norm. Um, and it was great because uh, I mean, uh, one, like I'm very passionate about food. So it, it kind of worked out that I ended up in that like particular area. Uh, the work was rewarding. Uh, sometimes it wasn't, but uh, overall, like some of the work that you were doing, like uh, kind of got you like uh, energized. Um, and the people in the environment were, were very different than what I, you would expect, like from a big four accounting firm, uh, right? Like it was very like fun loving environment. Like people wanted to have a good time as much as possible. Um, and I think the other thing too, is I hated wearing like a suit and tie, uh, especially in Arizona. That was like a no, that was a no go for me. And so I was like, yeah, maybe this is the right area for me. Um, and candidly, like I would, I, like, I, like I, there's, I mean, kind of going back to like knowing what I know now, um, like I would have done more internships, um, because you never know what else is out there. Uh, it's very different, like, like what, than what you expect. Uh, and, and it's just kind of like this, like small um like taste of hey like is this really the right area for me um and i wish there was more opportunities to do so uh right i wish there was like more i mean generally you do it in the summer but um uh there are other opportunities where you can do it throughout the year and whatnot and so i wish i would have taken more advantage of that and done the uh done more internships to see what else is out there and so kind of on the 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 trend of transition, Stephanie, you, you started in physical therapy, right? And then now you're in education. So um, do you, would you imagine yourself in that role uh, back when you were an undergraduate? <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> um, I knew I wanted to go into physical therapy. I had, you know, being in uh, academia was not even on my radar. I did you know, when I first started PT school, I didn't even realize that was an option as a physical therapist. So um this is definitely not what I could have even imagined when I was an undergrad. And uh, Christina, I, I'm guessing that I know the answer, but I'm going to ask you as well. Well, it's really funny because you might not know the answer. Um, I actually graduated from high school very early because I skipped a grade and then I graduated um, such that I got a full ride scholarship to ASU. And so I chose to do two degrees in four years. And um, then I was barely 21 when I graduated from undergrad. And I said, I'm not ready to have a real job yet. And the only um, graduate school that takes you without any sort of experience is law school. So that's where I went, <laughs> amazingly. <laughs> So I, I was way off. I just thought that was kind of your natural family. This is perfect. Makes sense. So you found it out of your own passion. That's awesome. Yep. All right. And Cassie, I know that you you also are going or recently went through a transition. So um, did you ever imagine that you'd be in HR? So the short answer is no, <laughs> definitely not. Um, like Stephanie, I had that kind of clear path of, you know, I'm going to become a therapist. This is what I'm going to do, which I think, you know, a lot of people who want to take the clinical route um, want to do. Um, so for me, I was very, very grateful. I decided to take the time off after my undergraduate because it kind of set me up for success. Um, not the best idea for everyone, but for me, it worked out. Um, but when I kind of realized that I didn't want to work in that clinical world anymore, um, I still wanted to have professional growth and doing so in the clinical world as a bachelor's level can be very difficult. And so I learned rather quickly that you can only kind of fight for yourself so much until, you know, an, an agency just has the hierarchy set up. 
and there's just so much that you can do to kind of push through that barrier. So um, I said, you know, what can I do where I'm still helping people just in a very, very much different capacity. So um, HR was a good avenue for me. Like I said, I'm still at the same agency. So I just say my clients are the employees now. <laughs> And I think that's all of our panel there. Um, so then the question that I skipped, I'm going to come back to now um, about what was the most valuable lesson or experience that you took away from college in general that has helped your career? Because it, it's not necessarily degree specific, but it could be really valuable for our, our students here. Um, and let's, uh, Stephanie, do you want to start? Yeah, I, I think for me is... Um, you know, you're going to have goals and life may not always work out exactly as you planned. Um, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. I ended up staying way longer in Los Angeles after grad school, mostly because I met my husband and he was finishing school. So it's not, you know, I had plans on coming back to Arizona very, very quickly after graduation and that didn't necessarily work out. Um, you know, so I think it, you know, you'll, you'll have goals, they may change. Um, you know, I don't, you know, I think some of us, I'm very type A and I wanna plan out everything. And, you know, just knowing that life doesn't necessarily work that way. All right, and uh, Christina. I think what I learned, especially as I approach year 18 in practice is the, fact that um, college, uh, high school was not the end of your education. College will not be the end of your education. And really the only way that you will ever re really succeed in any career you go into is to continue to keep learning every year, every month, every day, um, continue to keep learning something new, not become stale. Um, when I was, uh, there's a, a lot of attorneys I know that are afraid to go to federal court because everything they've always done has been in state court and that's what they know and that's what they're comfortable with. And I said, no, I'm going to learn federal court. And so I went in and I dove in and read the rules and started taking cases and then when I decided I wanted to start family law, I did the same thing, dove in, read the rules, started taking cases. And so, you know, never view your education as stopping. You know, I didn't stop in 1997 in high school, it didn't stop in 2001 with college, it didn't stop in 2004 with law school. And I continue educating myself every day. And that's, I think, what I learned most from college. All right, uh, Cassie, do you want to go? Um, yeah, I would say just coming from a background of wanting to, to help other people as a passion um, is to take care of yourself first. Uh, do what makes you happy. Have boundaries and time management and stick to those because it's very, very difficult to help other people when you're struggling. Um, and it's also just not fair. Um, you're going to be your number one cheerleader throughout the rest of your life. So take care of yourself. Do what makes you happy. Great advice. And Ray, you're coming in clean up if you want to finish this up. Yeah, I feel like uh, I'm kind of using a mishmash of what everyone sort of uh, sort of said. I feel like the most valuable lesson for me, uh, like as I like kind of reflect is kind of some of the behind the scenes characteristics um, that like ultimately like you learn throughout your entire life, but what college uh, tries to teach you, like the ability to problem solve and think critically, uh, organization, uh, time management. Um, I think Kathy uh, mentioned uh, mentioned that. Like resilience is a, is a big one, um, and being able to adapt quickly, uh, kind of to change. Um, uh, because I mean, like there's a uh, there's a meme I saw more recently. Hopefully everyone knows what a meme is. Um, that made me laugh and it was, it was showing the kind of stark differences of what like the education like lifestyle is like versus the, the professional environment sometimes and on one side I had a teacher like this report has to be no less than five pages and on the other side it's uh, and it says like reality and it has like a picture of Elon Musk and it's like tell me why I need to know this in 10 seconds or I'm out of here 
Um, and like, that's not always the case. Uh, like sometimes it is. Uh, a lot of times I have to put together 20 to 30 uh, page uh, PowerPoint presentations. So there's like sometimes like similarities, but um, like, look, the content is important and depending on your profession, it may be very important. Um, um, but the reality is you're gonna come across a situation that you're not, you weren't like educated on, or you may not have experience, uh, a project that you have to lead or a task that you have to do that uh, you kind of been like uh, tasked to take care of. And uh, and those are the characteristics that are gonna help you achieve those things um, uh, because you won't have any sort of guidance like leading you uh, across the way. Uh, the one thing I, my fiance is, uh, is an attorney as well in house uh, kind of going what Christina said, and she's like working in privacy now. And that's something that's changing every day. There's no blueprint for it, um, right? Um, especially even some of these like big organizations like Facebook and Google that are getting fined like millions and billions of dollars because they weren't even prepared for it. Um, so it's some of those things that, like I said, that are gonna help you navigate like the real world. Perfect. And, and I, I would just echo with everyone is that this is your life. So you get to choose what you want it to be. And if you get setbacks, that's just part of it. So so don't ever give up on yourself because you are are the in charge of your own story. Um, so Can I add something to that just a little mm -hmm. bit, um, just so um, everybody is aware. So my mom was a lawyer, but she actually that was her second career. She did not go back to law school until she was 40. And when I was, you know, went straight from college to law school, I was absolutely the youngest one in the class. Um, there was, I remember specifically, there was an OBGYN um, practicing OBGYN that decided that he had been practicing for 20 years that went to law school. Um, and most people um, in terms of the graduate program were on their second degrees and were in their you know mid 30s to mid 40s and my mom really found her passion in law and so i think the the tip that i would have is you know don't be afraid to change if whatever it is that you originally go out to do or think that you want to do changes. My mom, my mom basically got cancer when she was 35. And when she recovered was like, I'm going to take the LSAT and I'm going to be a lawyer. And, you know, out of nowhere had been an HR manager and, you know, ended up being a lawyer. So I think another key is not to, you know, stress about it because um, even though, you, you know, I, I see that some of you are very young and um, you know, even though it feels like a decision that you're going to make that's for the rest of your life, there are many people who start second careers, you know, you know, I think the OBGYN was in his 60s, if not 70s, when he decided to go back to law school and be a lawyer. I have no idea why, but, um, you know, so it's not to be afraid, you know, not to feel like you are stuck on a certain path just because, you know, you do something going out of college to be, you know, always open to a variety of careers. And I think the psychology degree definitely helps with a wide variety. Definitely. And um, it's, I was going to ask a question that one of our, our attendees has for you is about um, mentorship and networking. So Anna is asking, uh, do you have any tips for um, people who find it difficult to network, or maybe they don't have experience in networking professionally. Um, whoever would like to hop in. I'll, I'll start. So I'm a first generation college student. I am the first person in my entire family, cousins, aunts, uncles, everyone to go to college and much less grad school. And so this was something that was really new to me. Um, I feel like I floundered quite a bit. Um, and so I, I think if I could give some advice, if you're a first gen or if you maybe don't, don't necessarily know kind of what networking is, feel free to, you know, 
go out, go out of it, it. Honestly, it's getting out of your comfort zone. It's, you know, meeting people, it's asking questions, it's being curious. It's, you know, it, even for, for physical therapy, um, we want students to have observation hours, but they have to actually ask another th a therapist to actually observe them. So again, kind of back to having lots of experiences, you know, don't be afraid to ask, you know, the worst someone says is, you know, no, it, it's, it's not that big of a deal, um, but really putting yourself out there and getting out of your comfort zone, that's probably the, the best advice I can give you. Does anyone else want to chime in on there? I feel like I have the literally the exact same thing that I would say that Stephanie did, because I feel like we're in very similar situations, right? I was, uh, my brother and I were the first uh, generation in our family to graduate, and so it was really kind of the same thing. Like, for example, the career fairs, I talk about, I can't talk about this enough, in fact. Um, but I remember when the career fairs were available uh, at ASU, I would just kind of like scoff, like, yeah, no one actually like picks um, like people from there. Like, it's just, it's just for a show. And the, the reality is now on the other side, working for General Mills, um, we go to these career, uh, career fairs and we pick like people specifically from there. Um, and so kind of going to uh, what Stephanie said, like, look, if you don't ask, we, uh, the answer is like always no. Um, and so why not take a chance and, and see, uh, see if we can get like a yes out of um, uh, Dr. Cialdini had it, like, how do, how do you get the yes? Um, and uh, like, see if you can get to that yes. Um, and when you're going to some of these career fairs, I, I, I mentioned it before, like, have kind of an elevator speech, like handy, like what are the things that you're passionate about? Like what are things that you're working on that pertain to that particular um, like area or field that you wanna get into? Like you do some research on the organization that you're interested in. Um, like these are all like super critical and I can't stress, uh, I can't stress them enough. Um, and if, I mean, if there's ever like, for anyone on here, like I am more than happy to like have, like share my information to where if you have like kind of specific questions, because the reality is like some of us, a lot of us may not have had that guidance. And I think it's so important for, for your careers. And to kind of piggyback off of, of what Ray is saying, um, the, the best advice is just be yourself, be authentic. The, there's a good chance if you ask something that you actually care about and you, you're listening for an answer, you'll get a response. And in, it, maybe it's no, maybe it's yes. Um, but even sending a, a note to faculty, that's networking where it's, hey, I, I really liked uh, what you said in class about this. What, can you tell me more about like how I would learn more about it? And the faculty aren't rude enough to be like mean back to you. They'll give you something um, that's worth your time. So going to career fairs is a great way to at least even just meet people um, in a field that you may know nothing about, but it could be interesting to you. So just kind of be yourself. That's the, the best first uh, step of, of networking, uh, at least in my opinion. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm opinionated on that. Um, yeah, and I would agree in terms of, you know, just so you know, like Dr. Kavanaugh Toft was my, you know, first year psych 101 teacher in 1997. And that's how I got involved in this program um, because I kept in touch with her. And so it's really all about relationships. I will also tell you that despite the fact that I am a trial attorney and appear in court and now in Zoom court every day, um, I'm actually not that outgoing. Um, I'm, and I'm actually not very argumentative. <laughs> In fact, um, in I, you know, at home, um, my children, I have three children and they um, beat me in arguments pretty much all day long. And so um, I would also say in terms of reaching out to people, not to hesitate because I likewise am willing to, you know, bring people along and, have, you know, there's uh, this these days, especially with Zoom court. Um, if somebody's interested in law, I mean, that's that's great to me. And I, I think people really um, are maybe nervous about reaching out to people, but you'd be surprised at how many people are willing to just say, "Sure, you know, here's the link. You know, 
watch or or here you know you want to come and you know sit with i have a paralegal i have a full-time paralegal and you want to sit with her and you know see what it's like answering the phone or you know there's tons of everybody you know i i think probably every professional that is here would be willing to say you want to come shadow me for a day sure i mean it doesn't hurt me in any way <laughs> Um, and so it's, it's, it's really about, you know, even if it's not your personality, um, if it's not your personality, I would say, cause it wasn't with me cause I was a public defender. And so I didn't need to get clients until I started in private practice. And so then I had to practice it. And so what I had to do is I had to Google networking events and then I had to schedule them and I hated them. And, you know, uh, two weeks after I got my bar results, um, or two weeks, six weeks before I got my bar results, I had my first kid who's now almost 16, and then started um, six weeks after he was born as an attorney. And I didn't want to go to networking events, but like forcing yourself to go to one per week you know, and then, you know, two per week, because at, after 17 years, I don't have to go to networking events because I've done, I, I've done it, but forcing yourself to kind of push it and say, okay, I'm going to go to one a week or one every other week for the next month. And then after that, I'm going to go to one every week, you know, something like that, scheduling it for me, I'm also type A. So scheduling it and paying for it too <laughs> that way <laughs> you know you uh have to go because otherwise you're out money so like figuring out what motivates you to get out there and network um will always be beneficial definitely and uh before i get to cassie i was going to mention if you don't have a linkedin profile yet i would highly recommend building one and spending some time on crafting it to be per, your kind of online version of a resume, because it's a great way to reach out to folks in, in a very in, informal way of sending a, a digital um, kind of, hey, how are you doing? I'd love to chat with you sometime. Um, and it's it's a great way to kind of network while you can't network um, in person. Um, Can I so jump Kat, for a second? Okay, oh, yeah, please do. Please do. One more thing. I was just going to, I know I'm not one of the panelists, but you know me, I can't shut up. Um, but I thought <laughs> one thing I think, especially for current, well, I, I actually for anybody is I put this into the chat is doing information interviews and doing information interviews is really where you, you contact someone and you say, you know, hey, can I take you to, can I, can I send you a Starbucks gift card right now? Or can I take you to coffee? And can you just find out about what your career is? Um, and most of us, don't mind and actually really like talking about our careers because our significant others really don't give a rat's tail about, right? We, the, my husband doesn't want to hear about what's going on in my life or he's sick of that stuff. My kids, their eyes are rolling back in their skull as I talk about things, but well, it's really true. Like you, like, yeah. like nobody, nobody wants to hear about anything. Not I have three kids. Nobody wants to hear about any of my cases, no mm -hmm. matter how interesting they are. And they are interesting. <laughs> or the frustrations you have with with the judge or the frustrations that I have with, right, with whatever this is or how, yeah. how if, if, if they put me in charge, it would be so much better, you know, right? But it's yeah. nice to have that, you know, someone who's gonna, who wants to listen. And, and I think especially for people who are, who are not, who are more introverted and, or a little more socially anxious, you're actually not gonna do that much work. You have a handful of questions that you wanna ask and it's things that you really wanna know. You wanna have a little bit of an elevator pitch in the sense of if they say, you know, they say, well, what are you interested in? And I see people putting it into the chat now. Well, I think I'm, I think I'm really interested. I'm, I'm majoring in psychology. I'm, I think I'm really interested in working with adolescents or I'm really interested in this area, but I want to find out more. And yeah, that a lot of us are able to offer ways to shadow or like when I see clients, I can't have people shadow, but I can tell people about ways to get involved. Right. So I think there, I think it's a nice way to do things. So I think that's just another way to connect with people. So. All right. And Cassie, did you have any, um, any thoughts on that as an HR professional? Um, HR, maybe not, but just, you know, uh, <laughs> I think we're so quick to, to 
to believe that being uncomfortable is a bad thing and it's not. Um, being uncomfortable is a part of life and it helps us grow and understand and learn about ourselves. Um, and we shy away from that and understandably so. It's not the best feeling in the world, but it's really going to help you in the long term. Um, something I would always talk with clients about a lot, usually when they're coming in for mental or behavioral health, it's to change something, change something that's going on in their life and change is hard. So when we do things that we're not used to doing or are new for us, it feels really uncomfortable. But the more we do it, the better we get at it. Um, and just be reminded that it's okay to feel that way. Uh, and the other person might feel just the same way. So kind of using your mind as a tool in those instances. All right. So um, we before I ask for any last thoughts, do we have any more questions in the chat about anything that you guys would like to know? Um, I just have a question really quick. Um, uh, so I know what I want to do in a way. So I have an internship lined up already. And um, I know like that will help me kind of, it's a very like, um, I actually attended one, another panel. It was um, CARE 7. So I have an internship with CARE 7. But um, <laughs> so I have a feeling I'm going to like figure out what I want to do more. But I was thinking recently of joining like possibly criminal psychology, but I'm a bit intimidated by it just because I'm like, would I be able to handle that or not? So do you guys have any like advice on that? Um, first off, con congratulations. That's a great first step. Um, I'd just say go for it. If you don't like it, you don't like it. And, and if you do, then that's awesome. Um, the, I think the only time you're making a mistake is if you're doing something that's not right for you because someone else wants it. If you're pursuing something that you're interested in, there's no no harm in even if you do poorly with it. Um, it does anyone else want to hop in? Yeah, I had an internship with um, a civil law group. And even though it was not something that I was interested in, ultimately, I still learned a lot from it. And I learned that I wasn't interested in civil law. <laughs> um, and like plain and simple, I mean, that's enough in terms of in terms of the profession. And so, but you still learn things because what I, I think probably a lot of the professionals will agree, like if people come to you for advice, they know, you know, people come to me and they say, you know, I know you're a lawyer and somebody defamed me on the internet. Um, I learned that in law school and that was in Oh, three, oh, two, maybe, you know, and I'm like, um, libel is written, slander is, you know, spoken, and there have to be like actual, has to be actual like knowledge that it was untrue. And that's pretty much all I know, but I can refer you, you know, and so even if you just know a little tiny bit about something in your field, people will come to you or advice and so it even does help to know even something small even if you don't end up going into that area it, it helps to even just know a little bit about other parts so that you can say i know this much and i also know who to send you to that can answer your question so I, I don't think that there's ever, again, any bad education as long as you're still learning. Because it's a lot of times when people say something, it triggers, you know, off, you know, contracts. First day of uh, law school is contracts, offer acceptance consideration. That's all I know, but like I remember that, you know. <laughs> so, um, and I'll never do contract law, but. You know, when someone sends me a question about a contract, but I'll say, oh, well, this is an issue. So it's never, you know, never hesitating to stop learning, I think, is key. Yeah, and I don't really have a ton to add, but I just like reiterate like what everyone kind of said. If if uh, the criminal psychology is, uh, is, is 
true and it's not what you think, then you solidified that, right? And you can kind of move on. Uh, but you might be surprised that it's something that you're going to be really like interested in. And uh, once again, it can change like your kind of thought process and your career uh, altogether. Um, so I, I, I mean, from, from my end, I say, I say, go for it. Uh, but hopefully, I mean, like I said, there's always going to be a learning from it, whether it's positive or negative. I agree. Can I add that when I was an undergrad, I had an internship with a physician and I was a pre -medter. and I learned in that internship that becoming a physician was much different than what I thought it was going to be. It was a lot more paperwork and dealing with insurance companies than it was patient face-to-face -face patient care and developing relationships. There was very little of that and a whole lot of the other stuff I wanted nothing to do with. So then I decided to take a part-time job as a pharmacy tech. Maybe I wanted to become a pharmacist. I realized really quickly that that is not what I wanted to do. So those were very valuable in, um, experiences to drive my future decisions. Great pieces of advice there. So we've got about eight minutes left. So if anyone has any questions, be sure to add it in the chat. If not, we're gonna start with um, any sort of final advice that you guys would give uh, to undergraduates that maybe we haven't talked about yet. And uh, let's say, Stephanie, would you mind starting? Sure, so I, I, I think as an undergrad, again, stay open to lots of possibilities and alternatives and experiences. And then once you've figured out your goal, I think, especially right now, I just started this new doctorate program. I think if I take a step back, it can be really overwhelming and thinking, oh, it's another three years. And, you know, so I would say once you have your goal set, just take it day to day and you will be amazed when like for me, the semester is almost ending and I can look back and be like, wow, that, that went by way faster than I expected. But even, even like working towards, you know, the job of your dreams or, you know, the, if, if you're going to grad school, um, you know, whatever graduate degree you're, you're, you're going for, try not to let it get overwhelming and just take it day by day. Um, and then you, you will be able to look back and, and be like, wow, I really did that. All right, we've got uh, one that um, is from Peter who says, I know personally when I tell people I'm going for my undergraduate degree in psychology, everyone assumes I'm gonna be a psychologist and I'm sure many people have gotten that same reaction. What is your response to that? Um, and I, I don't know, Carolyn, if you wanted to hop in and, and kind of answer that one, I think you've got a good um, response. Oh, well, because I am a psychologist, that's good for ending it usually makes conversations get really awkward pretty quickly. Um, and people are often like, well, I'll bet you're, I'll bet you're judging me. And I was like, no, you got to pay me a lot of money to do that. Or I'll bet you're diagnosing me right now. And I'll, I'll say to them, no, you've got to pay me about 200 bucks an hour for me to do that. What I usually don't say is that I might be judging them, but you know, I'm kidding about that part of things. All right. Um, ba basically, we, we have a, a site here that I've been putting in the link that also shows the wide range of careers that we have alumni um, who shared their stories and experiences with um, in a, a whole bunch of different career fields um, that all have a degree in psychology. So feel free to explore any of those and just you could share the wide range um, that are available. It's been in the chat. I'm going to I think it's still there. There we go. Um, and so any final advice, uh, Ray? Yeah, I feel like, uh, I mean, going to, um, uh, going back on the question of, uh, they assume that I want to be like a psychologist because I'm going to psych. And yes, that's going to be like the, the kind of response um, uh, all the time. Uh, I can tell you that like my fiance had, was not planning on going into like law um, uh, when she was in like uh uh, that's actually where we met was in, um, in school. Um, uh, actually, uh, I think one of the classes we were uh, in together was uh, Dr. Kavanaugh. So shout out to Dr. Kavanaugh. Um, I don't know if you remember me, 2001, Abnormal Psychology. I should have gotten an A, but you gave me a B plus. Um, no, I'm just kidding. Um, but uh, I mean, the, the, the thing is, um, like kind of going off of that, the way that I always like kind of approach, like when you're looking at like a job description, 
is if this is a job just, I mean, look, it's going to be tough, like coming out of college because it's like, oh, it's, like, it's funny because even like internships and like entry level positions, they, they require like three to five years of experience, which makes no sense to me. But um, I think the important thing is that you have to like look at these job descriptions and it's like, hey, can I, do I feel comfortable doing about 70% of that? And if the answer is yes, then you should apply, in my opinion, you should apply that regardless of what the kind of um, uh, like recommend uh, requirements are. Um, uh, because at the end of the day, like no one's going to have everything on that job description, like figured out and, uh, have done it, uh, a good portion of the time. So that would kind of be like my, uh, my advice on, uh, on that. Um, and just another kind of takeaway outside of career, like, I, I also feel like a career is important. You're going to spend a majority of your time, like, uh, in your job and your career, but I don't think that like, that should be the absolute thing that defines you. I think the anything is like COVID kind of opened even my eyes a little bit um, in the sense that you should have other hobbies outside of your, uh, your, your career um, that you're passionate about. It may like change your career um, uh, direction of your career entirely. Cause you might say, Hey, I, I'm, this is something that I'm like really passionate about. Like, this is what I want to do. Um, I mean, in the last like year with us being grounded and no travel for with COVID, like we worked on like home renovation. So <laughs> And that's something that I'm like very passionate about. Um, so like, that's just kind of like some la like last words that I would, uh, would share as well. I'll add that, um, I'll just tell you that um, my mom always told me, and I think people always told me like in terms of bachelor's degrees, like go for what you like because bachelor's degrees really are intended to be base degrees, you know, kind of building on, you know, what you like and what you're interested in. Um, number one, and for the people that say, you know, I'm seeing this in the chat about, you know, psychology, psychology, people think that you want to be a psychologist or that you're going to, um, you know, uh, manipulate them. I will tell you people always uh, that that will continue for the rest of your life. So um, people call me, you know, I, around Thanksgiving, I have to deal with um, my aunt and uncle who say, how do you defend those criminals? And so um, it's just something that you're always going to have to realize. And um, it's funny because I tell, you know, I represent some of my friends who um, are accused criminals. And, and I say, well, um, you know, my client, my family always asks me, how do I defend those criminals? And, you know, you're one of them. And now do you realize why I do what I do? And it's to help people. It's not to, you know, it's not to get a death row murderer, you know, off so that he can go kill some children and, you know, rape your wife. Um, you know, my job is to, you know, get the best result possible. And so it, I think it's really coming up with a response because no matter what job you do, you're going to get that question. How do you do X, you know? And so, you know, I'm not, I think a simple answer in terms of psychology is, you know, I might not be a psychology, you know, I might not be a psychologist in the future, but I'm interested in how it can, you know, assist me in the rest of my life is a really good answer. All right. And uh, Cassie, do you have any last words? I think this will kind of close us out. Yeah, I think it's just important to kind of be mindful of where your mindset is along the journey. You know, every every path that you take, whether it's uh, kind of works out the way that you were hoping it, for, it would, or whether it doesn't, is kind of leading you to that to that next step. Um, don't feel disappointed if it doesn't work out because there's going to be another opportunity available to you. So just keep moving forward and being mindful that um, your hard work's gonna, gonna pay off and it's okay if you don't know where you're going right now. I don't, so it's all right. We're still working on it and we're still moving on. Perfect, so um, thank you everyone for attending. Um, it, I hope this was valuable to you. I, it, I really enjoyed hearing from our panelists. What we're gonna do after this is we'll send a follow-up email with links to various resources um, that are available within the Department of Psychology. And if you have any questions for our panelists, feel free to reply to that and we'll get them to our panelists. So um, thank you everyone for your time and for attending and um, have a great evening.
Thanks, everyone. Take care.